Hello and welcome to another modeling video. Today's another honing your airbrush skills video. I have uh, haven't done it for a little while. Uh, something's gone wrong since the last time I maintained it and now because uh, the mechanism's just all gummed up and messed up. It doesn't spray uh, nicely uh, whatsoever. I haven't used it too much so I'm not too sure what I've done wrong. So since I've got not a lot of time in about seven less than about five days I've got a big model competition and need to apply some top coat and do a bit of a touch up on a kit or two so we need to do a very 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 quick clean down that will suffice to being a full clean down so just so it's fully lubricated fully functioning fully stripped down wiped down no soak I'm low and thinner as well and that uh, will play it by ear. If your airbrush is really not behaving, there's no excuse for not doing a quick disassemble and just a really, really quick clean out. I mean, the tension is so tight, I have to <laughs> break the seal with um, pliers. So I've uh, definitely done the wrong thing here. Jesus Christ. I mean, sometimes um, we're in a rush. We definitely do the wrong thing. With a really fine, um, a touchier brand of airbrush, uh, this sort of behaviour is definitely going to have you out with a damaged part. With uh, the Sparmax, that's not so much uh, the problem. And if you ever do have uh, threads that are just absolutely uh, stuck, undoable that's actually not too bad at all um, the solenoid is completely free so I'm actually happy with just swabbing it out and leaving it as is that's not a problem whatsoever but I don't remember the solenoid being um, sticky that's probably because there's sufficient grease in there from the last time that I've done maintenance close inspection the tip looks fine we still need to remove the tip and then we will uh, begin the main proportion of our very very quick cleanup Always remembering to be very careful with the needle and nozzle. So the first thing I do in my very quick quick uh, clean downs is just wipe everything down. I got some lacquer thinner here. Uh, quick reminder: if your airbrush lacquers, lacquer thinner. If your airbrush in enamels, turpentine white spirits enamel thinner only. If it's acrylic alcohol based, isopropic alcohol, uh, Windex, uh, Dettol or um, methylated spirits is definitely suitable for cleaning down. If it's paints, those water based ones like Citadel, um, Gaia Note, Army Painter, they gunk up very easily internal, internally regarding different chemicals that may be used to clean your airbrush. So try to use some of the alcohol stuff. They evaporate really quickly and then just before you airbrush, thoroughly, thoroughly uh, flush out and then flush out with a bit of in-house thinner. Uh, also, don't forget when you finish cleaning, flush out with the appropriate thinner. And that way, uh, as soon as you're ready to do your uh, test sprays, you're not going to... Um, have your airbrush clogged immediately and have to strip down and reassemble. Um, I'm starting to become the uh, mind of since I've only been painting with one type of uh, paint of late, being a one type of paint man per airbrush is probably the way to go if you can afford it. If you very rarely use other type of airbrushes, that's probably where the high-sing, very cheap airbrushes can come in handy and you can keep one or two of your really good airbrushes for your main type of paint that you regularly use. Uh, sometimes you do get a bit of thinner on your hands if uh, you figure out that there's little um, lumps that are itchy that appear um, or rash 
you're a bit probably allergic to it try not to get it on your fingers too much a little bit's not too bad if you do get reactions uh, you're gonna have to wear gloves or you're probably just gonna have to walk away from the more heavy solvents stuff like your lacquers and turpentine so all the internal mechanisms have uh, been wiped down by hand very very quickly it's not too hard you've noticed that I've uh, pretty much done it in the last five minutes of uh, talking you've also noticed that I've uh, used uh, the q-tip which is very very helpful in getting into uh, quite hard to reach areas very very useful absolutely uh, vital and important for modeling uh, this room is <laughs> taking a little extra uh, effort to uh, tidy up I actually wanted to get this um, lid cleaner probably more of an aesthetic sake than uh, anything else but uh, in the end we are in a bit of a rush but we do not allow uh, impatience or a haste to do a poor job or skip, skip a step where we will have to go backwards and start from absolute scratch so taking your time even though we're doing a rush job is going to save you more time than doing the bare minimum trying to airbrush and there's that one thing that's just not quite working right all of the components are cleaned down except for the main body and the crown just going to give it a general wipe down and cleaning inside the cup uh, this is when quite a few of these q-tips are going to come in handy if you just need a stint in between um, doing very big airbrush projects and you just want the air to flow a little nicer the paint to flow a little nicer things are just starting to stick not right a little maintenance job like this is not bad at all. Another thing, and we covered it in our video cleaning airbrush without an ultrasonic cleaner, this mini uh, bottle brush is just going to see what sort of crap do we have inside. And behold surprise, I don't have a lot of junk in there. I think it's just a case of uh, paint seeping backwards by improper use of the airbrush and hey I sometimes do it notice how black the q-tips are just from that very very quick swab last area the crown build up a paint inside does make a big difference you should probably do this with every time you change colors or every airbrush session and just clean out the inner bit of the crown there we go not too bad and last but not least I'm going to swab out the inside with petroleum jelly Vaseline you can see it's starting to get a bit manky and lubricate the insides quite thoroughly so I'm just going to pack a bit of uh, petroleum jelly inside of there grease up the components and the sample and even though I'm pretty much doing this take to take action to action there's no uh, preparation or time that I'm actually working on this airbrush off camera that I normally do on the other honing your airbrush skills videos there's something like a good or oh, couple of hours of background work of uh, cleaning and preparing and whatnot uh, this time I just wanted to go real view of how quick you could do a basic field clean out or immediate um, oh shit there's a competition <laughs> clean out as that I'm experiencing right now so the worst part that always uh, I normally do off camera and um, this like is the lubricating of uh, the internal components I get uh, the jelly all over myself then I get it on the external of the airbrush and um, 
it's a general pain in the ass. Though, with just how smooth the airbrush works afterwards, it is totally worth it. Happy to do this on a monthly basis with just the sort of results you get. When you start lubricating the internals of your airbrush, you just wonder why have you not been doing it previously. It makes all the difference. It's just absolutely excellent on how smooth things are. Especially even the um, downside of the outside being a bit greasy, flushing it a few times. The air solenoid might be uh, just getting a bit stuck. And with everything said and done, we're going to start assembling. And uh, the tongue always is, is, is not, it's, it's never, um, uh, what's the word? It's, it's, you can never insert the tongue gracefully. It's, it's really hard to do it in, uh, one move since it's separated off the uh, main shaft and it's amazing off camera I did it absolutely perfectly uh, that is an absolute shame but uh, okay sirrah sirrah as they say make sure the tongue does not collapse in insert the trigger and it's all nice and really really greasy and it's all over my fingers it's getting everywhere absolute pain but it's all in there the internals are beautifully clean and the trigger is just working like a dream pushes down no issues so we did not have to clean that out we shall grease up the second half of this airbrush and now for the next week or five days that I'm doing quickie jobs I'm not gonna have any problems whatsoever probably should have put the nozzle in first always a reminder with the nozzle do not over torque it place it in and just one finger strength torque as light as possible the needle has gone through without any issue whatsoever nice smooth slide nut on the back pull the trigger right back crown goes on lid goes on I've just washed my hands and I'm going to pick up the airbrush quite carefully a place I didn't grease it or touch it with my greasy hands give it a bit of a rub down a bit of wipe with some thinner get it all nice polished beautiful looking and even though this is not as intense as my usual maintenance regime it's going to work beautifully. I could still see a tiny rim of paint in the rim and the um, crown. That's not a problem. It's just super, super smooth. I'm going to flush some thinner through it. I'm going to paint some lines. And I am pretty much finished. Now, the importance of this method is... Uh, if you're using a very expensive airbrush or an airbrush that is completely uh, not acceptable to do submerged cleaning or ultrasonic cleaning, a more detailed and thorough job that I've just demonstrated would be highly appropriate. Uh, be careful that some expensive brands of airbrush you cannot, you are absolutely not able to um, lubricate the internals of. So what we're going to do is add a little thinner inside our airbrush, finger at the end of the crown, push down, pull back and jet bubble. Empty the contents, 
and then we'll probably do a bit of um, lines and see how we go. I've just noticed on the bubble jet technique, the thinner got ever so slightly cloudy. So there's still a tiny remnant of the paint in there, but it's good that it's getting cleaned out. With uh, that all done, I've uh, thoroughly stirred and mixed some uh, lacquer blue. We'll thin it 50-50, uh, extremely thin. If your paint's already thoroughly thin, you just need to judge by sloshing the paint on the side of the glass with your airbrush and just seeing how fast it travels back. So if uh, it's sort of quite watery, it leaves a tiny transparent trace of paint on the side of the airbrush wall. It's a good mix, yet immediately going back. If it sticks and looks uh, quite a solid colour while sloshing on the side of the wall of your airbrush cup, then it's far too thick. Well with the PSI. Put our cap on because I spilt some paint. Away we go. This is not too bad at all. If we have a closer look, uh, the first couple are a bit shaky, splattery, gone far too quickly. Later on, it's quite solid. Uh, there's uh, no misting, no spitting, no splattering. Very quickly, done a pretty decent job. Very, very happy. Can't complain too much. Nice results out of just a very, very quick job. And just a reminder on cleaning out or changing paint, return or throw out the paint that you've used depending on your opinion on that subject. Either or is not exactly wrong or uh, should be promoted or demoted. Wipe out your bowl, have a look, there's a tiny bit of paint at the bottom. Flush it out. We do an initial flush because if there's a tiny bit of paint inside, uh, we clean it out. We pull the needle out so we're not dragging surplus paint through the entails and insides, you know, opening um, areas that will allow paint to seep backwards in future. Take the needle out, only wipe half that has paint on it, flush a few more times until the thinner in the bowl is absolutely clear. Use the uh, bubble jet method a few times. It is a bit... Uh, time consuming but the results are worth it having a very neat and clean airbrush is worth it and just having a tool that's well maintained very very easy to work with so uh, I'm just gonna flush it out a few more times and she's clean I have noticed in cleaning out my airbrush that um, after I did that round the tiniest bit of blue has seeped in the rear of it. I put a lot of grease in it, so it hasn't travelled far at all. It's probably uh, a tiny trace just before the trigger. Uh, it doesn't feel sticky or uh, messed up or anything because the washes in it are definitely dead. It's just a um, reminder that lubrication is very, very important, especially for older airbrushes that would normally be deemed unusable by most airbrush modelers but uh, in our case in our teaching this really old defunct with the nickel plating uh, removed in the inside rubbish bin worthy airbrush 
is producing some really, really nice work. As always, don't forget to wear your respirator, use your extractor booth, all that. Careful of the lungs, lack of thinner is uh, very carcinogenic for uh, breathing in, uh, besides uh, causing lung cancer. Screws you few in a neurological manner. Uh, due to my work, I've read the MSDS pretty bad. Was not going to talk about that? Uh, at the moment, in my country of Australia, we are going through winter. It is quite wet outside. Uh, very, very cold. Very, very hard to airbrush. I'm still choosing to airbrush with lacquers, as lacquers is uh, no water in the line. Very, very forgiving medium in the way of drying and hardening. In the way of uh, the cold weather, uh, paints are going to take a lot longer to dry, a lot longer to harden. Uh, the idea is, is uh, if you're thinking about your drying times, just double it outright before you handle pieces and apply parts really, really as uh, thin as possible. In the way of doing uh, gloss coats and matte coats, the environment's not too bad. If you dust on really, really fine paint uh, with uh, quite a bit of thinner or a little thinner, it will dry pretty much instantly. Less likely chance to uh, orange peel. Make sure you have your moisture trap uh, operating and you're able to uh, bleed that out quite regularly because if it's raining or whatnot, lots and lots of uh, moisture in the air. Uh, once you've uh, painted your model, and it is a cold room, ideally if you could just take it into an ambient room that's warmer and just let it um, have a bit of uh, heat around it, that's alright. Or ignore the time from during the night to the next day that it's drying. Don't touch it. Once sunrise hits, consider that your drying time because that's just going to give it a little extra chemical uh, hardening. Uh, lack of paint do react uh, during time and evaporation and not so much uh, due to heat but heat is a factor in speeding up the evaporation. When we're looking at uh, paint such as enamel, uh, very very poor weather to um, paint enamels. If you don't mix the enamel paint correctly and add the right thinner it might leave a sticky residue. Uh, that can be overcome by uh, putting an acrylic uh, coat down Acrylic paint, uh, very similar to lacquer paint, not too much of an issue. Realistically, the hardest weather to paint is extreme humidity and extreme heat. If you've got air conditioning, uh, that's obviously not a problem at all. If you don't, uh, during those times you'd be more likely spraying at night, not during the day. Cold climate's not too much of a problem. If it's raining outside, you do not want to rain where there's direct, or airbrush where there's direct rain or water could splatter or be anywhere near your work. An enclosed inside area, obviously only like a garage or a house. If fumes is a problem, uh, that is more of a living issue than a uh, modeling issue. But um, in those sort of cases, you probably want to look at a less uh, toxic paint such as acrylics. I'm going to show off one last thing before we end this video. Uh, don't forget, or I would like to uh, bring up, our Club Mecca workshop has been given a Max 3 airbrush and a new Sparmax compressor. I'm going to borrow it from the club and do a full comprehensive review uh, of its line on this channel. Uh, it is really, really cool. I like it so much I actually want to replace my compressor with uh, the new Sparmax compressor. The Max 3 is such a dream and a joy to use that eventually that will be replaced with a Max 3. Yet, still used for uh, all sorts of purposes as it is a good airbrush after all. And last but not least, we're going to look at finishes before we end off. Uh, a reminder with the Honing Your Airbrush Skills video series, the best way to improve your airbrushing is to play along at home. Uh, once a month or once every two months, because I'm busy, I'm being a hypocrite here, though I did airbrush uh, the other day at club using a different rig. Uh, clean your airbrush out between projects or a monthly uh, basis, paint lines monthly, pulling your airbrush apart, putting it back together, cleaning, maintaining it and practicing as often as you uh, humanly can instead of spending time on uh, Facebook or doing some other menial task, you will improve gradually. 
and you'll be doing um, freehand camo and uh, freehand airbrushing in absolute no time. None of this stuff is hard whatsoever. Stuff that you see from your most respected modelers are not hard whatsoever. There's a thousand settings, a thousand ways to use your airbrushes. You just need to go, hey, how did you achieve that pr uh, finish? I use blah paint, blah PSI, blah conditions, blah weight, with blah thinning. You go, oh, cool, I will try to replicate that. Once you've uh, mastered everything, replicating what other modelers do are really easy. And what even better, figuring out, experimenting, and uh, doing your own style and your own methods and your own settings are the best. The amount of time someone says, 2022 PSI is the best to spray. Love to blast it on. I go, nah, I couldn't do that. I don't get awesome results. 11 PSI is just a sweet spot for me with lots and lots of thinner. So uh, let's go check out the other thing I wanted to show off. So this is a textbook fuck up of way too much uh, matte clear where things are frosted. It starts frosting in panel lines, spreads on top to the surface. Way too many coats was impatient in airbrushing during bad weather. Now I've got to do some inking and some other work uh, before I do another mat, so I'm going to show you a bit of a trick. I have got some um, enamel varnish, and I'm going to mix a ratio of one part varnish to about six, seven parts turpentine, and it's going to be slow drying. What's it going to do is introduce the slightest amount of uh, gloss and a lot of thinner to the matte coat and dissipate it, sort of bring it back alive, mix it around and dry a lot more diluted with a slight uh, gloss finish. I'm going to do a bit of um, a sludge wash, a little weathering, some decals and then go back to uh, some more um, uh, matte coat style weathering. Also talking about freehand Camouflage, uh, that came out quite sick. That was a few tones of uh, different paints. Now the best thing about using um, varnishes like this is a pure gloss. The more you dilute it, the less glossy it looks. So it's not going to appear that glossy once applied as it's going really, really thin. And it's going to agitate the uh, way too much matte that we already have which I always apply my clear mats uh, via acrylic because they're quite easy to strip and they will not damage the lacquer underneath so there we go I'm going to apply a usual thickness usual PSI going to paint it and when you see um, the finished land the uh, top coat or the white lines and frost is going to disappear immediately like so. It's going to look glossy for quite a while because that's uh, the surplus thinner. And we'll do it again. So it's, it's quite matte. It's got direct light on it. Nothing reflecting back. A little too white. And now it's got a bit of a gloss. It's reflecting. It's not too bad. When it dries, it's still going to be quite matte, but it's just not going to have those extra deposits, or there might be the slightest sheen. This can be overdone by putting a very thin uh, matte over woods after. Uh, if you don't stuff up your matte finishing, you don't ever have to do this. But if you do, this is just a little something. And what the fuck was... Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. I just had a fail 3D print, but we'll deal with that right now. Now you know you've done it right, it may remain a bit glossy, but you know you've done it right when uh, the frost does not return. If it does get a bit glossy, then you just have to mat it again, simple as that, but stripping and other hoo-ha is not exactly required. If uh, you apply it and it appears immediately, you want to give it a wet coat. So you build it up until it's wet and shiny looking, so it takes a while to dissipate. And if it hasn't quite worked out, two or three coats may need to do it. If you have really severely frosted it too much, stripping will have to be an option. Now, just a bit of a conclusion. Practice makes perfect. I already uh, went way into that. Uh, the finishing things are not too bad. It's pretty good. Ideally with applying finishes, and I definitely didn't do that. Gloss, you can go wet, look hard. You just keep building up, 
it'll always dry clear it will looks good look good just be very selective of your um, choice of gloss coat if you're a future floor acrylic man uh, you apply it on as thick and heavy as you want. It can bead and do some funny things on the surface if you apply nice and hard and it's a little too much to the point where it starts to drip. Let it drip. It's going to solidify into a jelly state very, very quickly and there might be some white markings around. Do not panic. Where they have uh, the jelly droplets at the end of your model, just collect it with a tissue and soak it up without actually touching and ruining the finish of your model. Let it dry harden. It's going to be a beautiful, glass, shiny, awesome finish. Anything else that's gloss, cut it with a bit of thinner, going to look great. Matte, dust it on, wait to dry, dust it on, wait to dry, dust it on. Even if it takes a few days, and uh, that too will look pretty sweet. If you're working on a fairly flat finish, don't use a very heavy gloss for your um, uh, washes and decals and whatnot. As mentioned, heavily water down your gloss so it's not quite gloss, but the surface is smooth. It doesn't matter how shiny it is, it's just how the surface is treated. Do your thing, put top coat on top of that which is Matt, of course. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, until next time, stay tuned for more videos. Uh, this airbrush video only took me like an hour and a half to do, so I'm really, really, really stoked about that. I thought I wouldn't be able to do a lot of homing your, honing your airbrush skills videos for the next few months, but it looks like that could quite possibly change. Don't forget I've got a competition running. I've got a Facebook page. Uh, that's Summer Watts Active. Stay tuned for more content. Catch you guys next time.